Okay, hello friends. <laughs> it is time to unwrap another book for Wrapped Up. Episode six, everyone, and we say, woo! It's time to unwrap another one. So we're like halfway through doing this now. I'm gonna do this up to 10 episodes. These are the books we have left. Um, how are we feeling? Nervous? <laughs> so, so far we've had five episodes. Three were books that I had been the most excited to read. Two were books I was least excited to read. So this is kind of like a decider for where the rest of the series could go. I'm feeling nervous. Did we just open one? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. 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 We're gonna read another book. Are we all ready? I've, I cannot tell you the level of dread and fear and horribleness I feel <laughs> when I draft pick one of these books. It's like my whole fate is in my hand. <laughs> Well, not in my hands. Okay. Are we ready? I want a short book. So I'm feeling drawn towards like... Okay, I'm gonna go for this one. This red one down here. It's Are you idea. sure? Do I look as if I'm not sure? This is what we're going for. This is what we're going for. I'm not gonna... I'm not, mm, <laughs> I'm not gonna doubt myself. Okay. I'm not gonna doubt myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna do with actually a vlog in its own. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, we have got The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so we've got The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. So this is a non-fiction book. I don't think I've ever had a non-fiction book in Wrapped Up. I've got to do a whole vlog on just my thoughts on non-fiction book. That's either gonna be really interesting or not interesting. <laughs> But I have been so excited to read this. I wanted to read this so badly. I think this was one of the ones I was most excited to read. So it's just like thoughts and ideas about different aspects in life. I guess it's all just about humanity. Oh my god, I'm actually quite excited for this. This is like, I've been craving a bit more non-fiction. So I'm actually really glad that this has come up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're gonna read this. It's not very long. It's I think about 300 pages, under 300 pages. And I'm intrigued. I've heard good things, I've heard not so good things. But I'm excited to see what I think of it. And I'll just take you along with me, reading a non-fiction. I've never done a vlog for a non-fiction book on its own. But this will be interesting. We can chat a lot about different ideas, because it's I think full of different ideas about so many different things. We can chat about lots of them. Okay, I'm actually excited for this. I'm feeling happy. Okay, good job, wrapped up. morning it's not morning it's like four o'clock <laughs> oh I just woke up from a nap I'm feeling very sleepy I didn't sleep for long last night and I had pretty bad sleep and I just I fell asleep for 20 minutes after I finished reading the current section so I am I read like the first 90 pages I love the cover of this I just think the colors like the pink purple and orange they do something to me I love it I love it and it gives me that buzz. Anyway, so I am the first 90 pages in and I'm really enjoying myself. Listen, I'm feeling nerdy. <laughs> I know, it's activating my inner nerd. I love this kind of nonfiction. So let me tell you kind of, I, you can kind of guess what it's about, but basically it's just a series of essays from John Green about the human experience and our life and our world. Something that I'm really enjoying is he is like rate reviewing all of these things. So like he's giving everything a rating out of five. And as someone who's like my whole life <laughs> is reviewing for you, that's what would, it's a bit inception-y because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna give this a certain number of stars. I don't know, it's just interesting to think about the nature of reviewing. And he talks a bit in the kind of introduction about like the history of reviewing. And I'm like, huh. Much to think about. You know, a non-fiction book like cuts a little bit close to home. But yeah, so these sections, I'll tell you actually what 
each after each check-in I'll tell you what the sections I've read from are so far so I should have been rating these individually I haven't but anyways the first one was about you'll never walk alone which is Liverpool's song then we have humanity's temporal range Haley's comet our capacity for wonder the I don't have to pronounce that cave paintings about a cave with cave paintings scratch and sniff stickers diet Dr Pepper Velociraptors Canada geese teddy bears the Hall of Presidents air conditioning staff Oh, I just heard him pronounce it on the audiobook and I can't remember. Staphylococcus aureus? I don't know. The the bacteria and the internet are the ones I've read so far. And I'm just really enjoying it. I love this kind of, I don't know, non-fiction where it's about history, it's about humanity, it's about pop culture. I am preferring the ones that are more either historiography based or like pop culture, like the diet. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pepper one was interesting. More than like science. I'm not a science brain. Okay, I was always a humanities brain. I'm not a sciencey brain. And so although the stuff is still super interesting, um, I don't know, it's not as like <laughs> It doesn't light my, my brain on fire as much as some of the other sections. John Green trying to get me interested in the sciencey sections. There's science and scientific proof. It's biology. Any book that just has this like knowledge. I love like, I love meaningless facts. <laughs> Any book that has this kind of knowledge about humanity and just like these little interesting tidbits, I'm finding so fun to read. I love learning about stuff. I don't know, I haven't been, I used to love school. Okay, I, was, I don't know if I spoke to you about this, but I was like top of the class, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. But I loved learning, and I miss learning. I miss the feeling of, I don't think I consume as much information in my life as I used to. You know, I don't read, I want to read more nonfiction. I read it, I've been really hankering for it lately, because I read a lot of fiction, and you still learn from that. But there's just something about someone telling you these most like mundane facts that I am just vibing with. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, I need to pop out to the shop to run some errands and then I'm gonna cook dinner, it's my night. I'm gonna make some chili for everyone. So I'm hoping, I've got the audiobook, John Green narrates it and I am really enjoying listening to it via the audiobook. I'm listening to it a bit slower than I would typically with an audiobook. I often do it with nonfiction just to take everything in and just like, I don't feel, I don't feel like I process it as quickly with as much appreciation if I listen to it faster. So yeah, I'm hoping that whilst I cook dinner, I will get through most of the mo next section. So hopefully I'll check in with you again tonight. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Also, I was out again early on different errands and I got back and there was an Amazon parcel for me and I opened it thinking I'd, <laughs> I'd ordered something. But it was a package from Sophie with My Best Friend's Exorcism and Fangs, which is a graphic novel, oh my God, about like a vampire. I. I am just so thankful. Thank you, Sophie. This was like a little, little cheer me up for the day. And these are two of the books that I have probably almost bought the most in person. Like there's been numerous times where I've been in Waterstones or I remember I was in Forbidden Planet with this, looking at them and like I pick them up and add them to my stack and then I put them back and I keep thinking about them like, oh, I should have got that. So thank you so much, Sophie. I'm so, this is like my kind of horror. I feel like me and Grady Hendrix are vibing. I'm very excited to read more of his stuff. And then this just looks like such a cute little graphic novel. So thank you so much. Anyways, I'm running late. I'm going to go and I'll see you in a bit with more thoughts on what more I read from John Green. Anyways, bye. <laughs> I've just, I don't even know what I'm gonna say to you. I've just sat down and started filming. <laughs> I have formulated exactly zero thoughts. So I'm now about 180 pages through the Anthropocene Reviewed and I'm still really enjoying it. Apologies, I was gonna film B-roll of me cooking last night, but um, I was so tired. <laughs> you know, like when you have to, you don't wanna do anything and so you have to just do the bare minimum because <laughs> doing anything feels mentally painful. That was what yesterday was to me. I was like, listen, Megan, just, just cook. I got so close not cooking. So I just had to bin off the filming B-roll, got quickly yeeted out of the agenda. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Hey, the Anthropocene Reviewed. I'm really enjoying it. Let's talk about the sections that I have just read. So we have read in the last section, Academic Decathlon, Sunsets, Jersey Dudex Performance on May 25th, 2005, Penguins of Madagascar, Piggly Wiggly, The Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest, CNN, Harvey, The Yips, Old Lang Syne, Googling Strangers, Indianapolis, Kentucky Bluegrass, The Indianapolis 500. Then there was one on mortification that was on the audiobook but not in the book and I don't know why and then Monopoly so those are the ones I've read and I've just been loving it again I'm loving this mix of all these different topics like I love w uh, Wiggly Piggly no Piggly Wiggly sorry <laughs> Sorry. Good God, get a grip, girl. <laughs> That's about like the first ever supermarket and how that was invented. And just like, you have no idea how this information lights up a certain part of my brain. <laughs> I just find it so interesting. There's also a lot about football. John Green is a football fan, like a soccer, if you're American, a soccer fan. And I love football and it's so interesting hearing all these. I love, I love when a book gets like nerdy about something you don't expect it to get nerdy about. Like I didn't know John Green was such a football fan. I am so into it. And I think I heard some criticism of this a while ago. I don't know from who. I think I saw it in Goodreads or something that, you know, John Green in this book is very open about his mental health. And the book is written in the midst of COVID and like, especially at the beginning. And you can tell that he is struggling mentally. And I've heard some of you say that that is like difficult for them to read or they don't enjoy reading from that perspective as much. You know, they say that they, they find it depressing or they find themselves sometimes, you know, slipping into certain thought patterns that maybe he's exhibiting. I don't think it's not like overt, but you can tell that it's perhaps written at a time when he's struggling. But from my perspective and my view, it reminds me a lot of when I read stuff by Matt Haig as well, who's very open about his depression and struggles with mental health. And it's when you're reading from someone who has experienced that depth of like feeling to the lowest point, or through dark points. I feel like, and I feel like this for myself when I'd gone through hard stuff is in then the highs when you're coming out of that or it allows you the perspective on the highs that seem even higher. I don't know how to explain it without, I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. <laughs> There's something in this book that through him recognizing his difficulties of mental health, he's also able to see the beauty in so much in our world, in our lives, that I think if someone's perhaps on autopilot or everything's fine, you don't realize, like you search those highs out and recognize them more than other people would in this. And I, I, I don't know, I'm just, I am enjoying reading that and seeing with him as we read the beauty in, in so much, in community, in, uh, I don't know, I don't know. And it's different because he also talks about stuff in our world that sucks. That's the idea is like every, at the end of every review, he like, he's giving some stuff five stars, he's giving some stuff one star. So he also talks about stuff that sucks, but I'm coming out of it with a really, I don't know, positive outlook on life and humanity and our world. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it. I'll see you in like an hour and a half, maybe, <laughs> with my final thoughts because yeah, I don't know, just the pop culture, the way we look at the world, I don't know, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'll see you in a bit with my final thoughts. I give The Anthropocene Reviewed four stars. <laughs> I just finished it. I had a great time reading it. I was thinking like, you know, I had a great time. It's a four star though. Do you anything bad to say about it? Not necessarily, but it wasn't a five star. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. It is uplifting and hopeful and joyful about the world while also making you kind of have this feeling of dread about different aspects of the world. I feel like it balances those two really, really well. Oh, I haven't told you what sections this last last part was. So we had Super Mario Kart, Bonneville Salt Flats, Circle Drawings, Whispering, Viral Meningitis, Plague, Rintry Mix, The Hot Dogs of 
can't pronounce that. It's like a Finnish, <laughs> Finnish name. The Notes app, the Mountain Goats, the QWERTY keyboard, the world's largest ball of paint, sycamore trees, new partner, three farmers on their way to the dance, postscript. There was like also two, two other chapters in this section that were on the audiobook that weren't on the physical. I don't know why. I don't know why. I loved it. I had a great time reading it. It was fascinating. It was interesting. I'm so glad that wrapped up made me finally read this because it was a great time. Actually, now that I can think of it, perhaps the one reason that it is a four star and not a five is I think he mentioned this at the beginning is that it didn't feel like this book was uh, like <laughs> where this information was originally intended to be. I think this started off, a lot of the chapters were originally like podcasts and what have you. And it didn't feel like this book was like, I don't know how to describe this, but he had this idea for the book and he's super passionate about the book and that's why the book has been created. It felt like this is kind of like a pandemic project, piecing stuff together that had already existed somewhat. Um, and I didn't feel like the book was like, its own driving force in its own right. It's like a product of other things. Does that make sense? So I think I could feel that a little bit throughout the book and that's why it's maybe not a five. But I really enjoyed it. It was super fun reading from John Green again. I read all his fiction books when I was younger and then more recently I read Turtles All The Way Down. I didn't like it. But I obviously I loved his books when I was younger when I was like 13. You know, everyone loves a good old John Green when they're 13. It was fun reading from him again and his perspective and his ideas and reading non-fiction from him for the first time. I could pick up a lot on references and stuff. He talks a lot about God in this. Well, not a lot, but you know, it mentions God a few times and his kind of attitude towards God and religion. And it reminded me of when me and my mum read The Fault in Our Stars, we spoke a lot about kind of the God and religious imagery in that book. So it was just interesting reading nonfiction from his perspective. So yeah, wrapped up, I would say was successful. I'm really happy that it got me to finally read this book because this is the kind of book I could put off forever. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Yes, it was a bit different because I was reading a nonfiction. <laughs> And I think it's harder to do, especially a short nonfiction. This is only like 270 pages. And to do three check-ins for that, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Let me know what you thought of this. If you've read it down below, let me know if you're interested. And thank you guys so much for watching. As we get closer to the end of this wrapped up edition, I'm very excited because I'm going to tell you now, can't hold it in any longer. Episode 10, the final episode of this wrapped up risk edition is going to be really fun. I'm really excited for episode 10. So it'll be normal episodes up until then. And then that one will be a bit different. Anyways, I love you. I'll see you soon. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.